artillery is their satellite view of the battlefield. You can use this to spot enemy movement via falling trees and breaking terrain. Alert teammates to the enemy's movement, and if you're feeling lucky, take a blind shot. It might just net you a crucial kill. Welcome back to WGLNA as we just completed match number one of Fulcrum Gaming versus Turtle Police. Fulcrum are your victors. We're about to start the match of Bear Huggers versus Simple Tankers, and Simple Tankers is actually up 2-0 so far in the match itself. Again, I want to reiterate that we have scheduled on the hour all these matches. We don't want to have these teams waiting forever because some of them live on the East Coast and get kind of late. Right. So we start right on the hour and we jump in after the matches have, has already begun. And uh, I also want to comment a bit on the Red Rush. A fantastic work, by the way, by Frodan, who put together that team profile. Uh, now Na'Vi. Na'Vi, one of the strongest teams when it came to Counter-Strike, when it comes to Dota 2, and now when it comes to World of Tanks. They were the rivals for Fulcrum Gaming at WCG, and they actually had video cameras and were videotaping Fulcrum's gameplay and studying it at the tournament itself. So Fulcrum, when we went up against them, they completely knew, they completely shut them down because they knew how they were going to play on the different maps. It yeah. was really, <laughs> really intense to watch that. And Fulcrum knows that they can beat the Red Rush, and I look forward to seeing how they're going to perform at WCG this year in China in November. Yeah, and potentially the WGL Finals, honestly. That's right, too. Cause because uh, obviously... We already have Red Rush qualifying mm -hmm. through. Uh, Fulcrum now needs to, and let's be honest, they're a, they are a heavy favorite to uh, to at least come. Any tree two. can fall, though, Great Torp. Any, Any tree, tree can fall, <laughs> even one as big as Fulcrum. That's true. <laughs> All right, so we uh, have started the countdown. They are in the tank selection. Let's go ahead and talk about the team rosters for these two different teams for Bear Huggers. I apologize once again if I am saying these names completely incorrectly. I'll do my best. Frizzled, Static, Lestatsik, uh, Colonel Angus, Rui. That's Roy. 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 <laughs> yep. <laughs> I'll, I'll help <laughs> you out there. <laughs> Thank you. Getty, <laughs> BDL1000, Big Daddy0519, <laughs> Rodney Dangerfield, who I'm a big and, fan and of. And that's Bonzoid, not Bonzoid. Bon I got no respect. Zoid. <laughs> yeah. Bonzoid. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's go ahead and check out the team roster. For their opponents, it's going to be Simple Tankers. We get that uh, loaded up. Again, Bear ha Huggers are uh, an invited team, technically, because they replaced Pub Stars, who were invited from the Spring Championship mm -hmm. of the World of Tanks Wargaming Major League Championship Series. And they've actually started the Summer Series as well. Here we go. Team roster for Simple Tankers. We have Junior G699P, the captain, also great guy. His name's Colby Brooks. Pub Whisperer, the Slayer, <laughs> Hack. Zakumi, Enderus, Jay Smooth, Tarho, Ruthen Carlisle, Kill Panic, Jay Smooth. That was a uh, name of a friend of mine in junior high school. <laughs> and, and if you're smooth with the ladies, a, a nickname, right? <laughs> a nickname, <laughs> His yeah. parents didn't name him that. No, no, they didn't. No. If you're wondering why these teams sound so familiar, simplistic, simple tankers, it's because they're from the same team. Same, same clan. Same clan. Same or clan, clan yep. excuse me. Simp is a, uh, is a clan. Their focus is tournaments mostly, so they have multiple teams. They host other teams from time to time, letting mm -hmm. them share team speak space and stuff like that. So I was on a Simp team. I uh, Before actually going to Simp main, I was on my own alternate Simp team, Team Plaid. We started that up, did a few skirmishes and stuff. We're really comfortable there, but then got recruited to main Simp. It's uh, the sim teams are really cool because a lot of them are, are they're really feeling pretty solid, but they do see a few changes here and there. Well, the map is going to be Ruinberg for battle number three between these two teams. Real quick, retorp. Let's go over the tank selection before we show everybody sure. Ruinberg once again. We got again. an MX fifty one hundred, I two IS threes, two T sixty nines, and two T one Cunninghams over on the side of simple tankers. On the other side, Bear Huggers is sporting two one tens. I can't wait to talk about those. Amex 5100s and a Jack Panther 2, along with two T1 Cunningham's. Very interesting lineup coming out from Bear Huggers. We're going to go into that after we introduce Ruinberg. This is battle number three of Simple Tankers versus Bear Huggers. Simple Tankers is up 2-0 so far, and this is a best of five. So it is a match point for Simple Tankers if they're able to secure this victory on Ruinberg. 
And as we see so far, we have half the team split. So actually, Whoa. in three different squadrons or tank armor groups, we have three going to the Delta Village, two sitting in the city line at G6, and we have the two T1 Cunninghams, the light tanks, scouting over on the city side for simple tankers. So for the other side, that is Bear Huggers here, they are actually moving up to the Delta Village, taking all, they're going all the way out on the A line and then up the zero line. Yeah. And there's Pub Whistler is spotted, but who from? Uh, Frizzled, Frizzled is spotted right now, but he's gonna go dark right now as well. Um, I wanna talk about the two one tens really quickly. You guys might not be too familiar with it because we don't see the one tens nearly as much. Chinese um, tank, correct? Yes, Chinese tank and they, man, they hit really hard. They're gonna pen basically anything that they touch. Now, I have to point out that I was checking out the 110's guns at the beginning of this, and okay. I'm pretty sure I saw them mounting the 100 mil. There's a, they're, they're pretty much what I would consider two choices for the cannons you would bring on a 110. There's the 122, mm -hmm. which shoots quickly, has terrible accuracy, but the gold rounds on it pen for 300. Yes. However, it looks, from what I'm seeing, I'm pretty sure those are the 100 millimeter cannons for the 110's. Now, my memory could be just wrong, and I could be wrong here, and we'll see in a minute, just <laughs> based on how hard they hit. Uh, but I was pretty sure those are 100 mils. They fire decently quick, hit for about 320, which is average for most heavies. Mm -hmm. But well, you would say the advantage of having it is it's higher accu higher accuracy, maybe a little bit less damage compared to the other guns. Yeah, that is the that is the trade off for bringing the 100 mil, and it is considered the top gun for the 110, whereas the 122 is the same one you could mount on the on the IS2, which is a which is a tier seven. 122 is a stock gun. Yeah. For the well, not the one, not the not stock, but it's an upgrade, just not the biggest okay. upgrade. Nobody would use the stock gun then for a 110. Oh it's gosh, just gosh, no, 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 no. <laughs> Whatever the stock gun is for the 110, I'm pretty sure there's no reason to use that. Well, there's <laughs> no use no re there's no reason to use any stock guns. Let's be honest, guys. Really? Well, uh, the T32 is the okay. only you could exception. The 90, right? The 90. Yeah, yep. I would use the 90. So. Hmm. The, it's the only case in the game that I can think of where I would oh use you guys. the stock gun. <laughs> oh, you guys. Anyway, um, we have a lot of stagnation coming in from the, for this uh, battle number three, and it's mainly because, let's be honest, that TD. Yeah. How I dare you, TD? I feel like TDs slow the game down just because teams do not want to push into a TD. If you push around the wrong corner, it's, it's not like you could get tracked and take a little damage. It's you could just blow up. Yeah. Because yeah. That, uh, that, what is it, JP2? The Ag Panther 2, it actually mounts the same gun the mouse mounts. That's pretty It's also harsh. the same gun the E75 can mount, but at the same time, it's a huge gun <coughs> for a tier 8. And that's generally the advantage of bringing a tank destroyer. You get that, that slightly higher tier gun. If you're a tier 8 tank destroyer, you, sh you can get tier 10 guns or guns that belong in tier 10 tanks. And often enough, you that's generally how it goes. So if you brought a tier 7 tank destroyer to this match, you could have a tier 8 gun. Roddy Dangerfield, <laughs> the name of the person that has a tank destroyer, is kind of reminding me of Caddyshack, how everybody's kind of annoyed whenever you show up to parties and say goofy things. If you've never seen Caddyshack, that's a movie you really need to check out. It's a classic, classic Bill Murray, Chevy Chase movie. Uh, the split, again, from Simple Tankers, as I spoke about at the beginning of the match, it gives them a lot of map control. They pretty much can see about 50%, a little bit more, of the map. You could also maybe say the same thing about bear huggers with their two placed tanks, at least the one placed light tank over in the D3 section of the city, being able to capture any sort of city movement or aggression against their uh, flank on the capture side. Now, if they were able to do that, and then you would see bear huggers fall back, you would see a push from simple takers moving into the Delta Village and getting any sh kind of shots they can across the TIE fighter section. The TIE fighter section looks like sort of an inverted TIE fighter starting at E7 and ending at A0. If you don't know what a TIE Fighter is, I recommend you watch Star Wars. <laughs> 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 so uh, Caddyshack, Star Wars, so add those two movies to your don't list. Don't worry, guys. You just need to, you need to prep five hours worth of movies mm -hmm. in order to, uh, to understand this mm -hmm. broadcast. Let's be honest. Don't though. start at the beginning of Star Wars. Start at Episode <laughs> 4. Don't start at Episode 1. Why would you start at Episode 1? Uh, I don't Why know. Why would you watch Episode Never mind. <laughs> guys. All right, Tarho in the T-69, backing up Junior, both on the side of Simple. And still maintaining their positions here. No movement really yet yeah. so far, but there is a bit of a bit of movement from Simple poking up on the map and here. Let's mention another thing about tank destroyers. Yes, uh, of course your opponents don't want to walk into a tank destroyer, but what are really the offensive capabilities of tank destroyers? Again, because they are pretty limited in their direction that they can fire, 
it's hard for them to really establish an aggressive move onto other opponents. You can. It's just hard for a TD to lead the it, way. It, that's, exactly. That's, it's that's harder. The, it's he, harder. It's harder. He can't really lead the way. He has to come in just behind the heavy tanks. <laughs> and the TD in pub, st pub games was like, follow me, guys. <laughs> like, oh, no, I'm going to hang back, TD. <laughs> Thanks, though. Good luck. Uh, works in pubs. Works in, <laughs> yeah. in pubs just fine. You just lead the way of the tank destroyer. Mm. Out here, you can't do that. Someone's uh -oh. going to track you. Uh -oh. oh, and there's T1 a spot. Fight. T1 fight. Shots fired back on the side. Sea Slayer takes oh. some hits. Boo! And there goes the first kill. Jay Smooth helping out the T1 Cunningham Z Slayer. Great fight in between. Lestack sick. First blood against Bear Huggers. Simple Tankers now up one tank, one tier point. Now remember, these two IS-3s that are just chilling out in the city, they're a big liability right now. You're putting 16, or rather 18 tier points into the city and then leaving the rest, the 24 points over um, in, in, uh, in the Delta Village. If they get jumped, there's a very high possibility that these three tanks will die before the IS-3s can even remotely react. Uh, the big question is, can bear huggers really identify what's going on and say, okay, yes, I can make this type of call because this IS-3s have been shrouded behind the T1, the two T1s uh, and their cover. Yep. It should be fairly obvious though, two simple tankers, uh, what bear huggers is doing right now. I'm mm -hmm. just pointing this out because this is what I'm thinking. Yeah. If I were simple tankers right now, I would be saying they're all out in the east. Now, out in the east, they're, they're preparing to defend their cap and at the same time exert some control of the map. Now, they're not exerting a whole lot of control, and they're not being proactive with that control they have. They're really just waiting. They want their enemy to begin the cap. And what happens is after that happens, they will begin returning to base, and their TD, that Jag Panther 2, will go into an overwatch position, and he'll just destroy people on cap. Now, the way Simple Tankers has to deal with this is they have to create a distraction while simultaneously capping. Mm -hmm. So because they're so split up, you, those two heavies in where are they, is E5? Instead of maybe going out and attacking, they could go around and begin capping. And at the same time, the three from the south come in from the flank. But the one scout on E1 could, if you wanted to, put some pressure against the cap. And if any of Bear Hugger's tanks that are in the Delta Village pushed out into the TIE Fighter area, those tanks from simple tankers that are at E6 could lay some serious firepower against them. Yes, that is, I think, what's happening right now. We're seeing uh, a bit of a move. Zeesel are actually active scouting in a T1. I rarely see that actually making scout runs in a T1. Never see that, almost ever. Reason, usually, the T1 isn't considered fast enough or nimble enough to be an active scout, Maybe but he's doing it. Maybe your T1. Maybe my <laughs> T1 is, but I would say it's risky because the T1 just doesn't, it doesn't quite get there fast. For the same reason you don't use a chaffy kind of thing. The same reason people don't use Chaffee's is oh. the same reason. Oh. By the way, Chaffee's are 50% off this weekend for the promotion from... All right, Getty is going to be proxy spotted over here. Check it out. T1 proxy spot. Ooh. Just like I said, 110 getting a hit. Getty. Shot from the side. Where did it come from? He's trying to figure it out. Oh, oh another knows. hit in the back. More HP going down. T1 getting hit. Oh, Getty is less than 50% health. However, Roddy Dangerfield gets a kill against Z-Slayer in the T1. Pub Whisper launching even more hits, and Zakumi takes down Getty. And at the same time, blue base is being captured. This is what I was talking about. They're going to try and distract them a little bit. And at the same time, start a fight. So the the attention of bear huggers is going to be split with the fact that they have to, one, uh, engage this enemy. And then, two, they have to stop cap. So Colonel Angus, is, is it's his responsibility alone right now to stop cap as bear huggers begins their push into Pub Whisper. And there's that crossfire from those tanks that were at the E6 position now moving out of the city towards the open area. The 110 from Rui and Static getting shots up against Pub Whisper. Pub Whisper now is down. 20 seconds left on the clock. Bear huggers have a one point advantage at this time against Simple Tankers. 13 seconds left on the clock. This could be a tie between these two these two uh, teams here. Yep, this is exactly the time when Bear Huggers probably needed to push a little bit further forward, get one more tier eight, and then it would be over. But at this, but they stagnated, and even though they had the 110 Roy there, they didn't keep aggressing. Yeah, so we can confirm that's a draw yes, between the teams. There was not an eight tier advantage, point advantage. Okay, so it's confirmed yeah. a draw. Go to my screen, you can see four tier eights for each of the teams. Yep. Of course, um, two IS-3s, two C T-69s, Amex 5100s, 110, and Jag Panther. So nothing is going to come out of that, but this is battle number three. It's actually pretty nice for Simplistic. 
uh, simplistic simple, simple, tankers. Simple, tankers. simple tankers because they can either draw or win the next battle mm -hmm. to win the match. Yes, it's either draw or win, and they will take the match points in the next battle. We're going to find out what map this is going to be as they choose it, and we're going to start that countdown, but we're going to take a quick commercial break. We come back. It's going to be battle number four of Simple Tankers versus Bear Huggers. Don't go anywhere. This is World of Tanks. Welcome back to WGLNA. Apologize about that last match. There was an issue with the spawning points. We were able to fix it. We want to make sure it's fair for everybody here. So both the teams realized it. They're <laughs> yeah, like, I'm out. That's <laughs> our fault, guys. I'm out. <laughs> so, we do yeah. want to say that it, that is our fault. Um, but but let's go ahead and just give Simple Tankers the win. No, we no? can't do that. No, no? we can't do that. Okay. We can't do that. I, I, I think Bear Huggers could still do it, man. They, they would be pretty angry. They could. They, they would, would be, be pretty angry. angry. Um, Maybe see Angry Bears. <laughs> anyway, what's going to happen? We're going to completely rehost it. We're going to get the spawning points correct. So we're just going to flip. Same tanks, same map. So we're going to wait till everybody's good to go. We're going to start the game. Um, as we saw the beautiful IS-3, I actually pulled out the IS-3 stats here in my nifty little uh, stat mechanic 1, machine. 1,500 hit points. It's called does 390 average, 225 pen. With uh, with their standard rounds, 300 or excuse me, 255, 65, 65, with their uh, the APCR, mm -hmm. uh, top speed of like 30, 30 kilometers, 38 per kilometers 30? per hour. Really, it's mm -hmm. that that fast. That's why it goes um, to the front line pretty quick. Their their hull heavy. armor is 220, 110 on sides, 220 in the front. Uh, hull is. 110 on the front, 90 on the side, 60 to I the back. Stink. The turret, the turret is 220 all around. Oh, okay. The hemispherical yeah, that's what turret. I'm that's right. Mm -hmm. um, spaced armor, really important. Mm -hmm. Which spaced armor means basically you have two layers of the armor. So not only do you have to pen the first layer, but you have to pen the second layer as well. You have reduced penetration as it goes through the first layer. Uh, great for reverse angling. It I is. It's my favorite tank. It is. Anything else? It's just a beautiful tank. It's beautiful. It's just a beautiful Russian Clutch. tank. If you were a tank, you'd be the IS-3. No! I'd be the T-32, because there's no cons to the T-32. Well, but thank you. You're not nearly that beautiful. Though. Thank you. Thank you very much. The IS-3 was actually used in the Six-Day War, neat little fact. And the Israelis, who were up against the Egyptians and other surrounding nations, we're having a difficult time trying to figure out how to penetrate the IS-3, and they realized, oh, we can shoot it from the side, shoot it from the rear, and that was one of the factors that led to the victory of the Six-Day War, one of the most miraculous recent wars in, in recent time. Let's go ahead and jump into the game right now, as it is Bear Huggers versus Simp. Old tankers. <laughs> Talk to me, Goose. All right, so Static in a KV-5 is all alone with nobody here beside him. And he is just out in the city. The rest of his group has moved a little bit further to the east. And uh, this, this strat worries me because I have no idea what they're thinking. Well, Bear Huggers is fanning out in a three to two prong position. That one tank all the way to the front is that heavy is at the 110. Oh no, it's uh -oh. a KV-5 Here static getting yep. lit up by the IS-3s. You're in the wrong neighborhood, Static, as he tries to back out. Zakumi and <laughs> Ruthven Carlisle moving in to get those final shots in the KV-5, just unloading on him. But one shot was able to hit against one of those IS-3s. Excuse me, KV-5, 330 HP left to go. Zakumi moving in for the kill shot. Does he take it? Boom! Gets the kill. First blood goes to Simple Tinkers as Bear Huggers has lost their KV-5 HP powerhouse. That was quite there a distraction, goes. and they are going to go for the cap now as Frizzled and Colonel Angus are going to jump on cap, and I believe they're going to try and shield for their T1s who will be moving on to cap now. So it's going to be a cap fast with one with Getty and Roy in one tens to try and screen and delay. Notice the position speed. of Frizzle this time. The T1 Cunningham is moving behind him as he tries to shield them with the higher HP and also the damage output. The 110 Roy, Roy getting hit from the side, 50%, 35% as Slayer and Junior move in from the sides themselves and the great cross flank Colonel Angus goes down. Frizzle's gonna be holding back beside that rock quarry there, that pile. Getty almost down against Pub Whisperer and Roy moving in the 110 against oh. the IS-3. 
at this point, there is really no hope yeah. for bear huggers right now. They did not set up properly for this position, and this is over. J Smooth over there in the T1 even got to do some nice damage. They did not have much of a hope with that kind of setup. It's uh, really too bad. Well, that's how the cookie crumbles sometimes. The T1 Cunningham, not even worth a shot. Pub Whisper moves in. It's going to be a victory for Simple Takers, taking it 3-0 against Bear Huggers. Great work by them. Very yeah. decisive work of what we were able to see. We were able to see all the matches, but we did see. We saw some powerhouse play from Simple Takers. Yeah, Bear Huggers tried to go crabbing, you know? <laughs> and this is what I'm talking about. The KV-5. KV-5. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a big, hunking piece of chicken, okay? It's chicken. That's what it is. I'm so and they put it down, and they're just waiting for the crabs to bite. And the two IS-3s are the crabs, okay? They bit. They bit. They bit. They bit. Yep. But here's the net, which is all the other tanks. And they went... <sighs> Got they were all too slow. They all didn't put crabs. the chicken no, no, no. in the net. They were too... Exactly. There was no chicken. I have been crabbing. You, If you don't tie the chicken down, or you don't <laughs> even put it in the net, you're not going to catch any crabs. No, because they'll take it. Mm. No, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So they took yep. it. Um, th they started out too far, and then they just couldn't react to those IS-3s. The mm -hmm. IS-3s were obviously able to get back in time. Everything just did not work out for Bear Huggers. And, um, you know, it, it came down to Randall in the beginning. You were saying it. KV-5, what are you doing? Well, it, it's not actually the KV-5's fault. It's, it's the rest of the tanks. Where are you going? Yeah. yeah. They weren't there to support Don't the KV-5, bail them man. Out. You, the KV-5 is not a standalone tank. It absorbs a lot of well, fire and yeah, a lot it, of HP. It's for, it's for drawing out a couple of tanks mm -hmm. and saying, come at me, bro. And uh, obviously, they need to pounce on that situation and say, okay, we're going for the, the cap super, super, super fast. Yep. But they were too slow to, to start the cap. Well, we're going to take a quick commercial break. We come back. It's going to be the next match, which is River of Blood versus Refuse to Die. Don't go anywhere. WGLNA continues after this. Are you ready? Welcome to the Wargaming.net League North America World of Tanks. Oh Capture. my god! It is time for North America to answer the call of esports. This could be it! Five seconds left to go! Oh no, they got it got on the last second! An amazing play! This is just a taste of what's to come. He's trying to turn it around! Big shot's going down all oh over the place! Oh my god! 